Hi, I'd like to share my SVT experience with you. This is not medical advice, this is just what I experienced. Um, I suffered my first SVT in March 2021 uh, and my ectopic beats started some three years before that. A breathing exercise that I developed has permanently cured both my SVTs and my ectopic beats. So what is an SVT and what is an ectopic beat? Well, here's a simple diagram of the heart. So the atria at the top, the ventricles at the bottom. There are two nodes in the heart, the SA node and the AV node. The SA node is the initial pacemaker, so it's what's trying to pace the heart at its 60, 80, 100 beats a minute. So the SA node gives out an electrical signal and it flows through the atria up here and then finds its way to the AV node where it's conducted through as a gatekeeper through to the lower chambers of the heart after a small delay. And the delay is just to give the correct synchronicity between the pulsing of the two parts of the heart. Um, in my case, when the signal gets to the AV node, it sometimes gets caught and starts recirculating at a high rate, um, about 160 to 180 beats in my case. And then that causes the ventricles to beat at that higher rate. Um, there are many different sorts of, uh, of SVTs. Uh, so mine is known as, because it's re-entering the node and getting stuck, it's called atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia. So it's the most common SVT, um, although, you, as I say, you can have many of them. An ectopic beat is just a, an odd beat. Ectopic means out of place. It's initiated somewhere up here in the top part of the heart, and it'll cause the ventricle um, to, to contract before it was intended to contract, so not under the control of this AV node. Well, just for interest, here's an ECG I took on my Apple Watch. Um, and this was during an SVT, which resolved back into sinus rhythm. So here's the sinus rhythm down here. Um, this is the standard normal uh, ECG for the heart, um, a healthy heart. So there's a P wave, an R wave, a T wave. So let's remember this is a small bump, a large bump, and a medium bump. Now, when my heart went into SVT, you can see there are just the, the two waves there. There's the uh, T wave and the R wave, or I should say the T wave and the R wave. So there is no P wave um, because the pulse was not initiated correctly up in the top part of the heart. Anyway, there it is in, um, in SVT rhythm. And I just happened to be taking an ECG at the time when it resolved back out to sinus. It did it by itself. Um, I didn't do the Valsalva maneuver, which I'll talk about later or anything like that. I was just sitting on the couch and it suddenly resolved. So right here, it goes from being two bumps, two bumps, two bumps, to being back to the normal sinus sinus rhythm. So that was a rather unusual ECG to, to take. Here's an ECG taken on my Apple Watch um, before I started these breathing exercises and it was showing how many ectopic beats that I was getting from time to time. So once again, here's our normal sinus rhythm here. So the small bump, the large bump, the medium bump, small, large, medium. Then suddenly this one comes in. So that's an ectopic beat. So there's an ectopic there, 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 back to sinus, ectopic, 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 ectopic. So that's eight ectopic beats in a 30 second strip. Now that was a pretty bad, a bad strip, but that's 16 a minute. 
Uh, normally I was getting perhaps between four and seven uh, ectopic beats. Um, maybe in the couple of years, a couple of years ago, which would be say two years after they started, it was probably more like um, one every, perhaps two or three um, per 30 second strip, something like that. Well, a little bit of background. Um, I'm 72. I had my first SVT in March 2021. I was out riding my bike with my cousin, going up a bit of a hill, felt something funny in my chest, kept riding for another 10 minutes to my coffee spot, and after about another 10 minutes, it just resolved. So I went to my GP, my general practitioner, um, who put me on a Holter monitor, which is a portable ECG machine that uh, measures your ECG over a 24 hour period. And he sent me off to a cardiologist. The cardiologist uh, took an ECG and he tentatively diagnosed my condition as AVNRT. Um, and he told me that I could either, the diagnosis or the, the suggestions was that, um, I could live with it, I could take drugs, but the drugs are not particularly effective and they can have side effects, sometimes serious, or I could have an ablation. An ablation, as many of you would know, is where they put a uh, catheter with an electrode on the end of it up your femoral vein into your heart and they burn away the little section of the heart that's causing this electrical problem. He also told me something very interesting that my form of SVT and many other forms as well, and AVNRT is about 60% of adult SVTs. So most SVTs are, as mine is, not life shortening, not life threatening, and I could continue to ride my bike. So I was quite comforted by that news and I might just say that I've noticed that a lot of people um, on the web seem very distressed about SVTs, very anxious and I, I didn't feel like that. I, um, after getting that news I felt that it was a great inconvenience. I mean you can be, you can be at work, uh, these SVTs come on very quickly, you might be ready to, to, to do something important and speak to people, whatever it might be and suddenly you've got an SVT. So they're very disconcerting and they do interrupt your life. But my advice would be to not be overly concerned in the sense of um, feeling anxious all the time. I don't think that's necessary. Anyway, with this news that it's not life shortening, it's not life threatening, I relaxed and I decided I'd do um, a few experiments. So, um, I'd been using the Valsalva manoeuvre um, to defray these, or to get rid of an SVT while it was occurring, and that worked for perhaps 30% of the time. Um, I had, um, I'd taken a magnesium supplement and a potassium supplement for a couple of months, and that didn't make any difference. I also gave up coffee for seven days, and in fact, I had more SVTs that week than I had in any other week. So I gave that idea up. By this stage, I'm having one SVT every four or five days. Um, I started noticing things that precipitated an SVT. So for instance, bending down caused 9% of my SVTs. A palpitation in my chest caused 41% of my SVTs and exercise caused 50% of my SVTs. Then I started to notice things that seemed to fend off an attack. So from June 2021, I tried the following. Whenever I'm bending down, take and hold a very deep breath. When a palpitation was threatening, take and hold a very deep breath. And before exercise, take four or five deep breaths. So in starting to exercise, um, anticipate 
the hill coming if you're on your bike or whatever it is and take four or five deep breaths. And then I found that, um, that I didn't get an SVT even deeper into the exercise when I was exercising harder. Okay, well, what results did I get? Let's have a look. Well, over the next few months while I'm doing these breathing exercises, I noticed the following. My resting pulse gradually increased from 40 beats a minute to 50 beats a minute. I know my resting pulse seems very low. It's always been that all through my life, but it's never caused a problem. The Apple Watch can measure blood oxygen saturation and it's always okay. Um, my heart rate variability stabilized at 40 milliseconds. Heart rate variability is the an average of how much the time between each beat varies when you're at rest. And you might think that the heart should be like a metronome and uh, be beating at a very uh, accurate rate when you're at rest. But in fact, it's been found that um, it's better if it varies somewhat between beats. Um, so my HRV had stabilized at about the um, 40 milliseconds is about the, um, the time that someone of my age should experience. Um, the SVT is progressively reduced to zero. The sinus rhythm, the normal natural um, ECG of the heart was fully restored and the ectopics gradually disappeared. So let's have a look at these results on the Apple Watch. Here are the results on the Apple Watch. Uh, here's the resting heart rate. Here's the time axis from April 2021 through to now, March 2022, and resting pulse up this axis here. So back in May 2021, um, the resting pulse was 40, and it smoothly increased to now to 50 beats a minute. So that's a considerable increase. Um, I started the breathing exercises in June, so that's here, 40 beats a minute. Now, um, along here, I've logged the number of SVTs in any particular month. So in April 2021, I had four SVTs, May 5, June 6, July 10. Then they started to decrease down essentially to nothing. I did have one SVT in January 2022. I was on a phone call, or I just had a phone call, hour long phone call to my son, um, just talk about nothing in particular, uh, no stress. And just after I hung up, I got an SVT. I don't know why. Um, I suspect that there was a palpitation, which I didn't jump on by holding a deep breath, but uh, I'm not too sure. Um, over here, we have heart rate variability and in the early stages uh, it was all over the place and high and I'm presuming that's due to the high number and continuous ectopics that I was getting so that it was all crazy back in this area here. Then by about September it had stabilised and it stabilised down to around 40 milliseconds which is about some what someone of my age would expect. Now, whether there's some correlation in these graphs with the breathing exercises and the reduction in SVTs, um, we can talk about uh, later. Just out of interest, um, here's a, a recent ECG of my heart. This was taken on 2nd of March, 2022. Um, it's a nice smooth sinus rhythm. There are no ectopics um, in evidence here. And I get these all the time. Um, this is the standard ECG that I get. It, um, it's always invariable. The only thing perhaps um, you cardiologists that might be watching would say would be that the PR interval here is quite short. And perhaps that indicates my propensity to get SVTs or those cells in my heart that apparently have been there um, from, from birth. And it's interesting that the cells that do cause these SVTs, apparently they're present in about 40% of the population, but they only 
um, express themselves in an SVT problem in a small percentage of the population. Okay, well, what conclusions can we come to about this? Is there a cause and effect relationship between these breathing exercises I've developed and the incredible result that I got? Well, it's a little hard to tell, I would say. Um, my resting pulse progressively increased and my HRV progressively declined and stabilized after commencing the breathing exercises. Now, keep in mind that I got the ectopics three years before I got the SVTs, and yet they both remitted at the same time. So does that mean something? I'm not sure. Um, I'd be very interested to receive comments from people who might be uh, troubled to actually try this protocol, this breathing protocol. Um, and that's a bit of a citizen science type project, I suppose, that uh, if a lot of people find that they're getting a positive result, that might actually mean something. As far as the exercises are concerned and how to do them, um, I, what I've done is to incorporate them just in my in my day. It's not as if you need to do these exercises for 20 minutes a day as a separate issue. Just incorporate them into your daily routine. So for instance, I'm, you know, in the shower, washing my feet, I've had to bend over, I'm taking a, a, a deep breath and holding it. Um, if I'm weeding the garden, you know, I'll play a game and uh, can I get 10 weeds out, you know, before I take the next breath? Um, can I get my shoes and socks off and not tangle those laces uh, before I need to take another breath? So whenever you're bending over, take a breath and it becomes habitual, like a weightlifter takes a breath as they're, as they're raising the bar. Um, exercise, um, before you go into a mode where your heart would need to rise in beat rate, take four or five deep breaths. Um, and I haven't had an SVT doing hard exercise since uh, these breathing exercises uh, appeared to, to kick in. Um, whenever you feel a palpitation coming on, jump on it immediately. Instantly take a very deep breath and hold it. And if you, you have had a number of SVTs, you're probably able to detect when one might be threatening, uh, when a palpitation is starting up. But be aware of those feelings and, and act on it immediately. Now, it's, it's not as if um, this exercise is all about fending off SVTs. My SVT rate has dropped right down. The number of times that I'll feel a palpitation has dropped right down. I feel there's a training effect going on here. Something has altered in my heart. The graphs from the Apple Watch show that. There's long-term changes in my heart behavior. So does that imply a training effect coming from the breathing? I think it probably does. So um, I think it's all worth a try. Anyway, I really wish you well um, on your SVT journey. Try not worry about them too much. Uh, if you've got a diagnosis, as most people would be, that they're not life-threatening and not life-shortening, relax, notice what your body's doing, try the breathing exercises, and um, very good luck. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll finish off just with a screen um, underlining those breathing exercises once again. Okay, thanks very much.